so let's start with today's session and uh, so whenever we talk about iot devices what is that first thing comes to your mind so if you have used your smartwatch or your app to control any of the devices in your home or if you have used alexa a uh, device it's pretty much you're already in the iot ecosystem so by definition iot means it's internet of things and it's just the connection interconnection of system and gadgets uh, along with the sensors that will share the data and it will help to to communicate better and to evolve the technology as a whole and uh, iot has really picked up in the recent years as you can see in the graph below which is uh, sourced by the exploding topics um, starting from 2010 where the iot devices were pretty low compared to any non iot regular devices um, you can see the pace at which it has picked up somewhere around 2019 it stands head to head with it and uh, now it's beyond the regular devices and by 2025, it's expected to grow up to 30 billion, which is like three times any non-IoT devices. And if you ask yourself as well, uh, how many new gadgets or devices you have included in your life, which is part of IoT, right? Be it a smartwatch or be it any smart plugs uh, to control your system to any devices in your home or be it any smart thermostats, um, be it electric cars, um, uh, so uh, most of this, even today, we have we have been seeing that even the refrigerators to any household devices, uh, most of them do have uh, IoT angle to it. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So now that we know IoT by definition, what are some common IoT examples we can see around? So the first one would be definitely a self-driving cars. Um, self-driving cars have a lot of sensors. Uh, with them where it can detect the nearby cars and the path and along with the GPS it can drive by itself so that is one big example of uh, IOT and next thing these days healthcare has, has picked up a lot so be it a patient monitoring or be it to take any decision based on the patient behavior so IOT devices have strongly coming up in the healthcare sector as well um, one other area apart from these two uh, where iot devices are strongly being used as grids or smart grids uh, it is more for the energy related sector so what it really does is try to have uh, the devices which frequently monitor the usage uh, usage of the electricity and by by that it can automatically uh, divert the grid power it can balance it better so that way the distribution is much more linear and also can be managed really well apart from this smart homes is something you might relate to it really well these days you have smart plugs where you can uh, view it from your phone if if the lights are on or not you have smart cameras uh, which can use from your phone and view the live feed and also if, if the garage is open uh, you can control that from your phone even if you're not in the perimeter so these are some smart home devices um, iot devices which has been uh, introduced a lot and apart from this a very common thing is a wearables um, smart for smart watch uh, i watch is something which is a, a classic example where you can pretty much get notification and control uh, some of the action you can set reminders you can um, switch on and off uh, the, the nearby plugs um, if it's a smart plug so these things can be done from your watch itself so these are all some iot device examples uh, just to bring you up to the speed of where exactly it is being used and honestly these days each and every sector each and every house uh, is been adapting to iot a lot so it is everywhere we want it or not we are already part of the ecosystem so now that we know what is IoT, so let's take a moment to think about why we have to perform and test the IoT devices, right? Um, if you look at the surface, it looks like everything is perfect, everything works fine. Um, so why do we have to really performance test and ensure it? But you'll be surprised to know close to 64% of the devices are having one or the other performance issues. So it's not only about um, one device working properly, 
it is an ecosystem by itself um it has multiple layers it has to transport the information up to the cloud some decisions happen at cloud some happen at the edge uh in the nearby in the local data center but as a whole there's a lot more complexity and uh, you can have a lot many ish performance issues um, related to iot devices i would like to showcase some of the um, areas where performance issues are more common and been reported uh, by the end users so let's take an example of self driving cars right how comfortable you will be knowing um, that car is driving by itself how comfortable you will be sitting next to it uh, without having any control um so as per the sentiment goes 85% of them have raised concerns on the safety and there could be some software glitches uh, which can cause some serious injuries or death because uh, the the self driving car may not be able to take the decision on the split second so that might cause some accidents and definitely there's a uh, trust issue when it comes to digital locks um so it can if you have used smart locks to open your house or any smart locks um for any other places you would have noticed that sometimes fingerprints may not recognize well sometimes the codes may not recognize well so these are some trust issues uh, been reported by the end users with the self driving car so similarly in, when you when we move to healthcare um so 62% of them have not um shown any trust on these devices to deliver medications and also when it comes to 85% of the crowd um do not really trust the monitoring vital signs by these devices uh, they always feel there is a little bit of a variation when it comes to the actual numbers and the iot device numbers and uh, the, the other major player is a smart home where you can see that 83% of them have expressed concern that the device could malfunction completely and they they might uh, lose the control of the home and again it's a internet based device so definitely there will be a possibility of someone hacking into it so that's a concern some of them have also shown some concern about uh, they might get locked out if uh, completely access is given to the iot devices and some have also shown concern about these devices can have some level of technical uh, issues could could lead to some overcharge in the utilities um, and it could cost some water uh, usage as well so all in all if you see there is a concern there is some tension uh, even though if you have been using your smart devices iot devices um, apart from the regular devices like your watch or maybe some smart plugs you will definitely have to trust issue when it comes to handing over your safety or uh, your medical related stuff to the iot related devices so now we have uh, seen why iot devices need performance testing because there is a concern and there is issue across one of the best way to give some level of assertion or some level of assurance is by doing a performance testing and in doing it well um so if you think about a regular performance testing versus how we have to do in iot there is a slight deviation in the approach so first let's understand how these two differs from each other so some key differences uh, would like to mention that is the simulation itself so in regular performance testing you're talking more in terms of concurrent users how to simulate these users uh, when it comes to iot you are talking thinking more in terms of how many devices and sensors are involved with it so your your decision or your your execution will be driven by these numbers and uh, when it come to scaling um you will normally have a situation where you will be testing for few hundred to few thousand users uh, that will be the level of scaling you would expect in any website or any application but when it comes to iot you really have more variations because each uh, device can have multiple users associated with it so and each uh, home can have multiple devices so when you combine all together and when you have to think about the overview then you will be dealing with thousands of uh, devices so that's a huge number when it compared to the traditional pt way of doing it and uh, let's also look into the amount of data which gets transported in traditional performance testing um the data usually being transported at uh, at a large amount per request um but when it comes to iot 
usually a very minimal or a very normal data is being frequently sent and that needs to be um, kept tracked and processed further so instead of dealing with large um, data set at once you'll be dealing with a small data set at more frequency um, and also when it comes to protocol so far the regular uh, web application uh, you would be using a standard protocols and it has been around for some time uh, when it comes to iot that's not really the case uh, it has more of non-standard protocols communicating so we'll also look into a few of them in the later slides um, when it comes to request and response it, most of the time in regular performance testing the user is creating the request and receiving a response and um, that's that's the cycle we deal with but when it comes to iot um, it can create a request receive a response and as well as uh, provide some resp uh, additional responses to it so that means uh, when iot devices request for some uh, information it receives it and it processes it or it, it communicates and it has to communicate it back uh, to the devices so imagine if you're using your mobile phone to control a switch um, you switch let's say you switch it off and then it has to be communicated to the device and once that is done the device needs to communicate it back um, so that it can show up in your app saying that it is indeed that there is no power connection for that uh, switch so that's that's the cycle it deals with so, um, so when it comes to business intelligence um, traditional performance testing not every application needs business intelligence so we'll not see that very commonly but when it comes to iot bi is part of it it has to measure performance um, at a very optimal level by applying a lot of load on the iot apps so how do we actually performance test them so let's look into some ways um, ideas which you can incorporate so you can test them or the best approach you can follow for performance testing. So even before we start on those, let's just understand uh, the infrastructure, uh, how it actually works behind the scene. So for the simplicity sake of it, let's divide this into three segments. Uh, the first one is where the actual data is getting created, sensors are located. The second uh, layer is the gateway where it is a bridge between these sensors and to the cloud and ultimately the cloud where most of the functionalities reside and majority of the analytics uh, takes place so now that we know these three layers uh, if you put on your performance testing hat you would really think about what are the best ways or points to test them so first things first you definitely have to identify the non-functional requirements really really well because it is no more a traditional way of testing them you have a lot many external factors coming in so definitely you have to sit with the business team and understand exactly how these devices are expected to be performed um, and identify those non-functional requirements and scaling is also one other area where you really have to be careful and uh, capture the right information and unlike any traditional performance testing where um, it is okay for a website to take two seconds or three seconds to respond uh, the iot devices majority of the time if it is dealing with a wearables or anything related to healthcare or self-driving car where it's really important it has to respond uh, much faster so the end-to-end -end processing should be really quick so nfr requirements plays a major part in your overall testing um, second thing you have to be really careful about is uh, communication. So you really have to understand how these devices to sensors to cloud gets communicated because those are your points for you to test. So the number of devices um, out there, how much data it is sending into the gateway or uh, from there how much data is getting processed to cloud. So this is an end-to-end -end communication. And most of the time, these communications include TCP or HTTPS, UDC. So these are some uh, protocols which can be used. Um, but again, you really have to understand the layers beneath it, uh, starting from the device layer to connectivity, to the actual data layer and to the uh, end user, which is the touch points. So these layers will come into picture in communication. 
there are some key areas where you really have to pay attention and that is when you simulate or when you plan to test them um, what are the different devices um, being included not only the sensors or the devices which is collecting the data that will be interacting with your mobile phone again in mobile phone you have so many different varieties of mobile phones um, so you really have to make sure you are testing most of them and second thing is network so whenever you are planning to do a performance test um, getting that information of what is the network uh, variations you want to keep um, so that be 3g 4g 5g uh, how these devices are are situated based on that your response could differ based on that your experience will differ so that simulation needs to be there so network is one uh, latency is one other area which is expected the real devices will have some latency so that needs to be accounted and that's one area where you really have to test and identify how much latency is there so that is going to drive majority of the performance testing metric um, now you could be thinking uh, what are the tools available for us to test there are a few of them um, you will also see some of the regular tools like load runner neo load jmeter um, but there are some other tools which are more specific for iot related testing itself so you can use any of these uh, but the way you will be working is you will be going very specific on the protocols trying to generate the data which is expected from from those layers and also trying to simulate it for different uh, end devices if it's a mobile device and also playing around with a different uh, network settings so that is how you can come up with uh, the performance um, testing end-to-end -end plan and uh, again it is slightly different from the regular performance testing at, at first you might feel like it is uh, more complex difficult to deal with because iot devices and networks and the connectivity with bluetooth or a uh, different way of communication how the performance testing can be done but really if you break it down into the layers or from point to point how you want to test them then it becomes uh, much more easier for you to uh, do the performance testing um, I hope this session was helpful. You got some idea about IoT devices and especially for performance testing, what exactly need to be our mindset. Um, I would love to have a professional connection with you. Um, that, that's my LinkedIn handle. So please go ahead and send a request. Uh, if you have any other questions beyond this session, feel free to uh, comment that down in this uh, uh, video or you can also reach out to me directly. And that's our uh, American Association of IT Professionals link. Uh, please do follow us there. Any future uh, sessions we do, any webinars we do, we will be posting it there. I hope to see you again next time. Thank you so much. Take care.